Lucetto Nunzio from Earthwalkers Custom Footwear sent me old razor blades and some scissors they used to make their handcrafted leather boots with and asked me to make a knife with them. Now, I've used scalpels and razor blades in Canister Damascus before, and they are fun, but they just don't produce a very interesting pattern. So that's right, we're going to use bits of our scissors mixed with powdered steel to make a blade in this case. The cool part is that I want to use the steel in these scissor blades to make the cutting edge of the knife. I was worried these scissors were either stainless steel, which can't really be forged very well, or a cheap case-hardened low-carbon steel with a coating on it. So I whipped up a test container seam here, and we lucked out. These scissors appear to be nickel-coated high-carbon steel. Nickel makes a horrible blade, but it contrasts well when etched in acid. The first step is going to be to grind off the nickel coating like I did here on these scissor blades and check that we got it all off by etching the steel. And you can see here where there's still some nickel coating left on this one. So I'm going to have to take that back to the grinder. Great, so now that we have all of these scissor blades cleaned up, let's tack weld them together with my arc welder then I'll forge weld them together in the forge using borax flux. All right, our scissor steel core is ready, so let's cut up pieces of the scissors to go in the body of the knife. The white stuff going in our canoe canister is titanium dioxide powder, and I'll mix it with water, smear it around. It keeps the canister from sticking to our billet. Everything is going to get a soak in acetone here to make sure there are no oils in it before it goes into the canister. Our scissor steel core is going to go in the bottom of our canoe style canister Damascus container and I'm surrounding it with iron powder which will etch light gray while the scissor core will etch black making it more easy to identify and grind everything away from the edge other than that steel scissor core which is what we really want to be there doing the cutting.
at forge welding heat, the powder and scissor bits will all stick together in one solid chunk under a hammer, or in this case, a press. So that big chunk is an area that just didn't pack all the way and it's a bit of a hazard moving forward so I've ground it away. You can see that there's a nice snake skin effect to the scissor steel and the powder. Unfortunately this effect is going to go away after heat treating to some degree. But our solid dark etching core can be seen along the edge of the billet right where it should be and that's good news. We'll cut an angle along one side to assist in shaping the knife tip. We don't want to do too much hammering there because that will narrow our solid scissor core at the tip along the width of the knife. At this point, I haven't decided whether there's enough good steel for a full tang knife or whether or not we'll have to go with the hidden tang blade. I'm trying for the former. If I can hammer it out thin enough, we should be able to expand it to fit the proper dimensions and still be able to grind away those little bad bits of material you saw me pointing out there. We'll do some profiling here, see what we're left with. I think I'll have to go do some more hammering and get things a little thinner. In order to get it that thin, we'll just have to go ahead and hammer in a taper, which is no big deal.
This is looking so cool. I'm excited about it. Time for some forge side thermal cycling. We don't know what the steel is, but some low temperature thermal cycling should help just about anything, so we'll start there. I know from my test piece that this will quench from low temperatures into a medium speed commercial quench oil to harden, and so that's what I'm gonna do here. This got very hard, it's pretty cool. It's skating the 65 HRC file, so that's pretty neat. The steel may turn out to be pretty good stuff. So it's out of the tempering oven, and you can see I've already checked the temperer with an HRC file several times. I didn't know what the steel was. I didn't want to over temper it and soften it and have to redo the quench because everything came out pretty straight and I'm happy with it. So I just sort of went low and slow. I started at 360 degrees. Then went to 380, still it was very hard after 380, so I went to 390, and as you can tell, it's a 65 HRC file. And just digging in, but the 60 is still really skating nice. So somewhere between 65 and 60, I think I'll just keep it there. I'm not gonna do any more tempering. In my excitement, I forgot the handle holes <laughs> prior to hardening. So I'll drill down the tang here and see if I can't get something drilled. As you can hear, that didn't soften the steel enough. So I'll put it on the mill and use my carbide bits to drill the fastener holes. And I'll also have a chance to mill out some areas to reduce the overall weight. We're going to do some cyclic etching and polishing. So here we're etching, then I'll take it and polish it, then I'll etch it and then polish it about three times. Since heat treating, most of the contrast has disappeared, unfortunately, with the exception of the nickel coating on the scissors, which is sort of disappointing. But continue to cycle through etching and, and polishing and etching and polishing just isn't going to do very much in this case. Next time I'll use all iron powder to preserve that snakeskin effect because the iron Etch is much lighter than the 1095 powder, which constituted most of the canister in this case. Here it is, all put together and oiled up. It looks pretty sweet. Let's check the edge here in a second. Well, it looks pretty good. I don't know what the steel here is again but it heat treated very well and took a blistering sharp edge. So I'd like to say I'm very impressed with it, but then as soon as I do, someone who knows will post that scissor steel is actually garbage. I think it's doing pretty good though. Well, as usual, there's some things I do differently, but overall I'm pretty happy with this. I'm wondering about making a razor with the scissor steel and just sort of keeping the scissor loop as part of the razor handle. That'd be pretty cool. What do you guys think? 